Hello again from Temple Emmanuel in Orange Village, Ohio. We hope that you are enjoying these last couple of weeks of summer and that your children and grandchildren are all ready to go back to school if they haven't already done so, and that they, as well as you, will have a new year, which is coming up soon, uh, that is full of health and joy and connections with God and with the Jewish community. This week we read the Torah portion, Ki Teitze. Ki Teitze means when you go out and the context is war. The context is going out against your enemy and doing battle and capturing people in that war. The Torah portion specifically talks about protecting women who are captured in war. It is the antithesis of what we see going on with ISIS in the Middle East. Women are not to be taken as slaves, even if they are enemies and even if they belong to another religion. The Torah recognizes normal human impulses, but puts in place several things that make a person who is observant or even not observant, maybe even just fearful, think twice, three times, five times, ten times before he takes advantage of anyone, woman or a man, who has come under his sway. It's an important lesson, not just in times of war, but in our society, and it's an important lesson for any time in which we hold power over anyone else, whether it's a boss and an employee, or whether it's a teacher or a professor, or a professor and a student. We know of too many instances in our society where one person takes advantage of someone else who is younger, weaker, less politically powerful than they are. But the Torah goes and talks about other situations as well. It talks about situations of children from multiple wives and insists that those children be treated fairly according to the law. It also talks about the Ben Sorer and More. The Ben Sorer and More, or More is a child who is incorrigible, who cannot be controlled by his or her parents. It's a weird procedure that the rabbis of the Talmud tell us was never actually done and will never actually be done because it requires the parents to go out in public, condemn their child who is then executed. The rabbis limit this category as they do with many untasteful things to a category where really the parents have only a couple of days in the life of a child to do this. But it does talk about what you do in extremis. And so many of the laws that we have are the laws of what you do when you're under extreme circumstances. The positive way to look at this, however, is to say that when we are in crisis, our Jewish tradition and our halacha helps support us by sort of holding us in and helping us to say, okay, I'm beyond thinking straight about what's going on. And so I call upon the tradition, I call upon rabbis, cantors, teachers, to help me understand how I get through this particular crisis. We see this in everyday Jewish life. People become very concerned about traditions when they've had a death in the family or a loss, even though in most of their lives, tradition really doesn't play much of a role. But the lesson of this Torah portion and the lesson of Judaism in general is that we should not wait for moments of crisis. We should not wait for moments when a child has gone astray or when a marriage is failing or even for moments of war to decide that we are going to fall back on tradition. In a panel discussion a couple of years ago on medical ethics, I was privileged to participate in a discussion where people were talking about the passage of the Talmud that deals with what happens if you have two guys who are lost in the desert and only enough water for one of them to, sh to survive. And there's all kinds of discussions, and nowadays people relate that to the question of limited medical resources. It was talked about in Jewish circles when Obamacare was being debated in Congress. But I got up at this conference and said, look, the point here is not who gets the last bit of water. The Jewish point here is conduct your life in such a way that nobody runs out of water that everybody has enough. Judaism is not there as a religion of crisis. Judaism is there as a religion of day-to-day -day living. 
so that we avoid the pitfalls and the crises that do occur as much as possible. And of course, no one lives a perfect life, and so then we do have the tradition to fall back on. But on most days, the question is not what we do in extremis, but what we do day in and day out, week to week, and especially at this season, what is it that we are going to do year to year? Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova Ushleima. May you each have a wonderful and completely full and healthy and happy new year.